And I have some remarks I'll make up there, right, too. Right, fine. Mr. President, <clears throat> excuse my voice, uh, ladies and gentlemen, but I've been in bed all week and I hope it holds out. I think it will. Mr. President, Mr. Secretary, Mr. Secretary, members of the Congress and my colleagues on the Commission. Mr. President, let me say that the Commission you appointed last May to create a greater public awareness of the drunk driving problem, to study its many ramifications and to make recommendations has been quite successful. Through a series of public hearings around the nation, we have received very informative and helpful suggestions from people in all walks of life. We heard from representatives of nearly every profession. All of them emphasized the desperate need to do more about irresponsible drunk drivers. Motor vehicle accidents are the number one cause of death for all Americans up to 44 years of age. Just quickly, Mr. President, I couldn't help bringing this along with me. That's a headline from the Malden Evening News that I was president of a few years ago, quite a few years ago, about a young lady, 27 years old, was studying for her master's degree at Tufts University, who was killed by a drunk driver, driver aged 37. His license had been revoked. He had been arrested three times before for drunk driving. He had been arrested five times before on a revoked license, and yet here he was driving again, and he had never served a sentence of any kind in that whole period. That's the kind of thing we have to combat. The testimony we heard around the country is clearly another indication that all our efforts must be directed toward reversing the prevailing attitude that drinking and driving is a socially acceptable act. A public information and educational program must be waged by both the public and the private sectors as highway safety allies. Task forces working to remove drunk drivers from our highways have been established in some 34 states. They should be instituted in all 50 if we are to effectively address and implement the recommendations of this commission. The issues recommended by the commission recognize our special concern for young people. The establishment of age 21 is the legal drinking age. Penalties must be more stringent with mandatory sentences for first and subsequent offenders. Trial proceedings and license suspensions must be prompt, and programs for treatment and rehabilitation must be initiated for our youth and adults. Finally, funding. The key to implementation of these recommendations should be through self-funding programs at the state and local levels. We refer to them as abuser fees and some federal assistance is necessary. Mr. President, I am pleased to present to you today this interim report, which is a result of many hours of hearings and deliberation by the outstanding commission, except for me, that you appointed in May and the fine staff work of the department. We will have a subsequent document for you, the 50 governors, congressional leaders, state and legislative authorities, and others with suggestions for appropriate action to reduce this carnage on our highways. Mr. President, there's no doubt that the work of this commission, along with the efforts of many aggressive citizen groups, has displayed a significant role in a sizable reduction in traffic fatalities this year. And mind you, Mr. President, this is something that we're very proud of. By the end of October, there were over 4,500 fewer deaths on our highways as contrasted to the first 10 months of last year. 4,500 fewer deaths. I'd be very happy if I thought I had saved one person's life during my entire lifetime, and it's not John Volpe, it's not the commission. It's the work of a lot of people, the um, mothers' groups and all the other organizations and the support of the enforcement agencies, the judiciary and all. So we feel that we've got to keep this momentum going so that we can make even further reductions in future years. The public, the American public, is determined to have action, and we must assure them of our continued support. On behalf of the Commission, Mr. President, I want to thank you for the opportun opportunity to perform this service for the administration and the American public. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Governor Volpe, secretaries who are here, and uh, if you suddenly see some of those who are among you breaking and running for the hill, I understand that a vote is coming up, so I'll say my few words as fast as I can. For too many years, 
People have approached the problem of drunken driving as an unavoidable disaster like hurricanes or floods. Well, we've learned that's not the case. We've learned we're not helpless. Action can be taken when the people are concerned enough. And the people are not only concerned now, they're mad. They want the slaughter on the highways to stop. They want those who threaten their public safety to be held accountable for their actions. Each year, approximately 25,000 lives are lost in alcohol-related auto accidents. And I'm delighted to hear that that figure has been considerably reduced now as a result of this commission's work. An additional 700,000 people each year are injured in crashes involving alcohol. Our loved ones are not being killed in drunk driving accidents, and I put the word accidents in quotation marks. They're dying because some of the nation's motorists have chosen to turn their vehicles into weapons. Citizens groups, legislators, judges, police officers, people from all over the country are saying that's enough. Get these killers off our roads and get them off now. Last April, I appointed this Presidential Commission on Drunk Driving to explore the problem more fully and to work with state and local governments in developing effective programs. And John Volpe, as chairman of the commission, has given us some encouraging information as a part of this interim report, which I look forward to reading. Apparently, a potential drunk driver who knows he stands a good chance of being caught and prosecuted is less likely to drive at all. And for this deterrent to be efficient, however, state and local law enforcement officials must make it clear that they mean business and that the drunk or drug-influenced driver will be the prime target for apprehension and conviction. And clearly there's no single solution to the drunk driving problem. The Commission has noted several approaches I know, including a New York State program that is self-supporting, as John was talking about. It pays for its expenses through fines levied on drunken drivers. We're going to give careful consideration to all of the Commission's findings and ideas, and we're going to look hard at what the federal government can do to help state and local governments combat drunk driving. Fastening the seat belt is the best thing that the individual can do to lessen the threat. But as we launch Drunk and Drug Driving Awareness Week, we do so with increasing mo momentum. There's much to be done but the American people are beginning to see progress. Laws are changing and traffic deaths are declining in those states that already have strong drunk driving pro programs. In Maine, the highway death rate has dropped to an all-time low, and alcohol-related highway crashes have been reduced 42% since stronger laws went into effect. In Maryland, the highway death rate is at a 19-year low due to strict enforcement and laws against drunk driving. I'm confident the future will see a sharper drop in traffic deaths as this country takes the strong steps necessary to make our nation's highways safe again. I also want to express my gratitude for the leadership and the energy of the many members of Congress and the others, others have shown on this issue, and I've asked them to join me here this afternoon. If I knew which way they were going to vote, I'd know whether to talk faster or slower. <laughs> <laughs> but let us resolve to make National Drunk and Drug Driving Awareness Week beginning of national campaign that will not end until death by drunk and drug drivers is brought under control. So together with conscience and commitment, we can reduce the menace of these drivers and protect the lives of our fellow citizens. And now I have one more thing to do, and that is to sign the proclamation. My 13-year-old twin daughter was killed on May 3rd of 1980 by a drunk driver in Sacramento, California. On May 7th, four days later, I founded MAD, Mothers Against Drunk Drivers, a national organization with 95 chapters in 32 states. 
I would like to honor you, sir, as the first president to take a leadership role in the drunk driving issue and make you an honorary member of Mothers Against Drunk Drivers. <laughs> Right, you get there in time. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, thank you all. Thank you, members of the commission. All of you are here. Very good, John. Very good there.